welcome you one and all to this our midweek Lenten service of devotion. In these services we will begin the reading of St. Mark's Passion Account and our focus this evening will be on the anointing of Bethany. She has done what she could. All who are able, please stand as we begin our worship. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Grant us, Lord, the lamp of charity which never fails, that it may burn in us and shed its light to those around us and that by its brightness we may have a vision of that holy city where dwells the true and never failing light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 561 in evangelical Lutheran worship, Joyous Light of Heavenly Glory. <laughs> me when I call, O God, defender of my cause, who set me free when I am hard craft, have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortal, 
How long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble, Tremble then, and, and do not sin. Speak, speak to your heart, heart in silence upon, upon your, your bed. bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. May Many are say, saying, Oh, oh that, that we was might, might see sing better times. times. Lift, Lift up, up the light of your countenance upon us, O oh Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O oh God, source of deliverance and help, do not let our hearts be troubled, but fill us with such confidence and joy that we may rest in your peace and rise in your light through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink, for by doing this you will keep burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To prepare for the hearing of our passion reading, we will sing hymn 345, stanzas 1 and 2, which is on page 4.
reading of the Passion of our Lord according to St. Mark in the 14th chapter, beginning at the first verse. It was two days before the Passover and the festival on unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. Let us sing stanzas three and four of the hymn, Jesus, I Will Ponder Now. <laughs>
We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. For by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus said, She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. In Christ our blessed Lord and Savior, my dear brothers and sisters, taking the Gospel of Mark for our guide, we follow Jesus through some of the scenes of the last week of his earthly life. Jesus and his disciples have arrived at Jerusalem and are spending their evenings in the small suburb of Bethany, where they are having dinner at the house of a man identified as Simon the leper, of whom we are told nothing further. Was he perhaps a leper who had been healed by Jesus? We would assume that his leprosy was now a thing of the past, or he would not have been in the company of ordinary people, but still the name leper has clung to him. Was he perhaps another brother of Mary and Martha besides Lazarus, or the husband of one of them, or simply a family friend? We can only guess. Mary and Martha themselves are never mentioned by name here in Mark's Gospel. Although St. John's parallel account does speak of them in telling this story, and this woman who anoints Jesus, she with the alabaster jar, is left nameless in Mark's Gospel as well as in Matthew's but the Gospel of John alone identifies her as Mary the sister of Martha and Lazarus. But it is upon her action that our attention is focused. She came with an alabaster jar, a very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured it on Jesus' head. This was a high mark of honor to bestow upon a most honored guest, and it was a token of the deepest love and affection. And we hear that there was angry murmuring by some around the table. Matthew's Gospel says it was the disciples. John's Gospel says it was above all Judas Iscariot who voiced these feelings. Why was the ointment wasted in this way? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. But Jesus comes to her defense. He is touched by her act of devotion. Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have 
me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. Was this really what was in the woman's mind? To anoint Jesus' body for burial? Was it woman's intuition? Perhaps. Certainly our Lord himself knew that his hour was close at hand. Jesus saw in this woman's act a prophetic sign pointing to his own impending death yet at the same time signifying that he is the anointed Messiah of Israel, yet one who is emptied of all pretensions, notions, and ideas of what a Messiah should be, for he will suffer and die and will achieve no glory whatever in this present world. And truly I tell you, says Jesus, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. And so it is being told once again right here tonight. She has done what she could, says Jesus. Our Lord accepts what we offer him. It may be small and insignificant in our eyes or in the eyes of others, or it may be seen as great or costly, even wasteful and extravagant. That is not what is important. What is important is that we are motivated by love. We are motivated by gratitude, which will cause us to pour out our lives for him who poured out his life for us. Immediately following this episode, we have the contrasting figure of Judas Iscariot. No evidence of love there. He goes to the chief priest and is willing to hand over his master to them for a sum of money. It is Matthew's Gospel that tells us it was 30 pieces of silver. Mark here does not specify the amount, but it is actually a paltry sum for which he was willing to hand over his master. And while we can never fully understand his motivations, doubtless greed and envy and disillusionment all played a part, this Jesus just was not the Messiah that Judas Iscariot was looking for, one who would get an army together to overthrow the hated imperial government of Rome. Judas is for us a, a dark example of discipleship failure, one who simply cannot understand that it is in giving life that life is found. Is there anyone else in the story who perhaps is willing to take the risk of love? Jesus sent two of his disciples to follow a man with a water jar. Perhaps Jesus had prearranged this signal with this man. And this one leads them to the owner of a house who provided the large upper room where our Lord will eat his last supper. 
supper with his disciples. This householder was no doubt aware that the authorities were seeking Jesus' arrest, and it may have been at some risk to himself that he provided that upper room. He too is one who did what he could. The disciples of our Lord, one and all, were far from ready to give the response appropriate to the overwhelming impact of this man, Jesus, with whom they had walked and talked and been in his company for three years. Only afterward would they understand. But finally, my sisters and brothers, it is we must say that no response that we could make can ever match the aboundless love of Jesus Christ. In the upper room, he will share himself with his disciples. From this day forth, I will be your food and your drink. And on the cross, he will give up himself for the life of the world. No sacrifice we make, no offering we give can ever match that total outpouring of love. But may it be said of us that we have done join in singing the hymn 803, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
service, we would uh, usually take our offering. Since we're not passing the plate at this time, uh, your offering may be given. If you have not already placed it there, uh, at the end of the service, you may place it in the plate that is near the door. We are going to uh, offer our suffrages and prayers now, and all who are able. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again. And sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Keep our nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also Amen. with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide now the people of your church, that following our Savior we may walk through the wilderness of this world for the glory of the world to come. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made, and you forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts, so that truly repenting of our sins, we may obtain from you the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We raise up to God now all the special needs, prayers, petitions, and thanksgivings of our hearts, whether we voice them aloud or silently. We want to lift up in prayer tonight our young sister Anaya Westfall, who is a grandchild of uh, Pat Hardin, and she was at church here on Sunday very recently. She comes whenever she can. She lives in Akron, but uh, she is uh, suffering from some medical condition, and we pray for God's healing strength and power her, and the Lord would ever hold her close and embrace her with his love and keep her as the sweet and lovely young lady that she is. And we pray also for all our members who are on our regular prayer list, and we pray for those in the community and far beyond who are 
lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may stand for the benediction and the closing agreement. The Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit defend us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>